Welcome guys to Lawn Care Tips and Tricks. My name is Blake Hawthorne, owner of It's His Turf, and today we're going to be talking about how my guys blew up two engines and BR700s in less than two months. This really just narrows down to improperly mixing the fuel that we were putting into these machines. And so what we found out is that our guys were actually going to the station with a two and a half mix and maybe putting three or three and a quarter gallons just topping off the jug and then throwing the mix in there, throwing the mix in there, filling up the jug, whatever it was, and then going on about their days. And what we found out is that this fuel was not having enough oil to it, which was causing the engines to run hot. And once our mechanic actually got in there and broke these engines down, we saw a lot of stress in there from heat, which we know was caused by not having enough mixed oil into the fuel ratio. And so guys, that's when we realized that we had to create some kind of process within our company to keep this from happening. So the first thing we thought of was actually just having one guy going and filling up all the mixed jugs and then having them put on the trucks each morning. And this really just didn't make sense for what we were doing. So what we did is we just had a little class one morning, got everybody down there and explained to them, hey guys, if it's two and a half mix, we gotta put two and a half gallons of fuel. And the thing we did to make this very easy for them is we told them that the first thing they're gonna do when they get to the gas station is when the meter was on zero to first fill up their jug. So if they were putting in two and a half gallons of mix, they would only do two and a half gallons of fuel. And then if they were gonna do five gallons, they would do five gallons of fuel. And then that way, then they could fill up the mowers, they could fill up the truck, and it didn't matter what it came out to on the on the meter after that. And this allowed for us to be able to keep a very close eye on what was happening. And we solved it in just a few minutes with our team before going out one morning. I wish we would have done this a few months ago and that could have saved me two blowers. But I did it and I learned a lesson and I figured out that even though I see it as common knowledge, that is not always the case. So guys, be sure and put some processes in place for your company to keep this from happening to you. Some other things that we were talking about was we were discussing how to mix the fuel was also when these jugs get down to the end, how usually they're gonna have some trash or debris down into the bottom of the container. And so we wanted to create some kind of process that we were able to go in and flush this. So we have a a tank outside that we're actually able to take that mix it out and dump it into that tank where we then can recycle this fuel and we're not putting that trash and debris back into our machines and guys since we're talking about fuel and leaf blowers well another thing that I wanted to talk about is how a lot of times if your mixed jug sits on your truck for a little while that the oil is actually going to start to settle to the bottom and that as you're using that and you're topping off you could actually end up with your oil and your gas mix being too rich and so with this happening uh, you want to make sure that you are shaking it up well and then using up this fuel luckily this time of the year we go through five gallons a day so we don't have to worry about that happening but for those of you that are not using it on a you know every few days or at least on a weekly basis make sure that you're thinking about that the thing you're not gonna burn up the engine when this happens it's actually gonna be running rich and it start to smoke and sometimes it's good for it but what you are gonna see is you may start to foul out some plugs. And so something that we do is we carry spark plugs on our truck along with fuel filters and a little bit of fuel line because you never know when you may need to service one of those parts when you're out in the field working. We actually had a third steel BR700 go down, but as we got into this motor, we actually found out that it was a manufacturer defect even though they would not admit to it. And so what we found as we dug into this machine is that it actually had some plastic gears in there and as the gear broke, it actually messed up some other internal parts. I'm not a mechanic, Casey is, and so he showed me these things, and uh, it just showed me that, unfortunately, they're not making equipment like they used to, and these plastic parts are gonna wear out a lot quicker than metal machine parts. And guys, that's just a risk that we're taking. Fortunately, I have not had to tear apart one of my Husqvarna's or my Echo's to figure out if they're using plastic internal parts as well. If the day ever comes and those machines go down, I'll tear them apart and let you know. But until then, I'm gonna keep rocking them. For those of you guys that are wondering, we're actually using the Steel Ultra, which is the silver package of oil, since primarily most of our machines this season were steel equipment. Since we're kind of switching over into Echo equipment, I plan on using the Red Armor oil as we go into 2020. All right, guys, make sure that you're mixing your fuel ratio correctly, service your equipment regularly, and don't forget about the debris that is going to settle to the bottom of your tank and your gas jugs. But guys, thank you so much. God bless and have a great day.